sir you haven't uh, shared the recordings of the two last two pre last two classes yes yes sir uh, and uh, that i will share after this class okay but uh, you are attending the class and taking the class note na so, yes sir but uh, it will be better if we can revise uh, all, all, watching the videos all of that is better but i am not getting time i am busy with some other work so therefore i could manage to send that video lectures because it takes some time to Uh, first upload to the youtube and then i shared the link generally so uh, definitely i will share those so you are discussing the uh, determination of parameters of equivalent circuit of a transformer and we saw that uh, there are two tests uh, which are performed uh, for transformer one is called the open circuit test another is called the short circuit test now from the open circuit test generally we uh, measure the or we determine the shunt branch parameters that means the rc and xm okay so these are the two parameters which we can determine from open circuit test and the short circuit test generally we uh, we find out we determine the series branch parameters that is the copper resistances and the leakage reactor okay now uh, i also told you that uh, the condition for these two tests are different the condition for uh, open circuit test is the rated voltage and the uh, for short circuit test it is rated current okay so conditions are different and uh, the open circuit tests are generally preferred to be done on the low voltage side and the short circuit tests are preferred to be done at the high voltage side okay and i also explain why this. now uh, we have al almost completed the transformer part because we have other machines uh, to be discussed in this class uh, but uh, before that i will uh, discuss a few things about the losses and efficiency so if you have any uh, doubt any query regarding whatever we have discussed so far you can ask sir yes sir can you please uh, re explain why uh, the short circuit test has been done in the high voltage side now uh, short circuit tests are prefer to be conducted at the high voltage side because you see we have uh, three meters connected in this isn't it now uh, suppose think about this uh, volt meter so suppose my uh, transformer is 110 by 11 kv okay so suppose this is the transformer rating okay and suppose the uh, kva rating is 10 kva so this is the rating of a sample transformer which we want which uh, we want to test now if we want to uh, 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 want to do this test then uh, what will be the rating of this voltage Uh, we have to pro provide at this site. Can anybody tell me that? At, 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 uh, you have to say that uh, the range of the voltmeter that you have to select because uh, you have a series of voltmeters available in your meter room, where uh, the rooms, uh, the where the meters are kept. That is called the meter room. So from this meter room. Uh, what are the uh, voltmeter you have to, what are the meters you have to take that means what are the ranges suppose voltmeters are available like this 1 to uh, 150 volts sorry 0 to 150 volts 0 to 75 volts 0 to 300 volts 0 to 600 volts so these are the general range of the voltmeters 
So different voltmeters are available in meter room, instrument room. Okay, but uh, can you tell me that the voltmeter that we'll choose for this test, what will be the range of that? If my transformer is having this rating, and also we have to say that what will be the ammeter, which ammeter we should select because ammeters also available in different range like uh, zero to one ampere, zero to three ampere, zero to five ampere. These are the normal ranges of ammeter. And suppose zero to <clears throat> ten ampere, zero to so zero to thirty ampere is quite a good range. Uh, available in our normally available in our meter rooms and also you have to say that what are the range of watt meters because uh, you have to think practically now as uh, the condition is uh, rated current not rated voltage for short circuit test now can you estimate that what is the rated current at which we have to perform the test what is the current? What is range of the current? Suppose if we select 110 volt site to perform the test. So what will be the rated current that site? That it will be uh, 10 into 10 to the power 3 by 110. Okay, so what is that value? Can you calculate? Around 100 ampere. Yes. Around 100 ampere. Around 100 ampere. Okay. So is that available in that range, in that list? No. And generally the, uh, the, the KV ratings are still higher. In that case, much high current is required. Okay, so the ammeters will not be available in that range. So that is one point for which we generally select this side, high voltage side, because if we take the high voltage side, then what should be the range of the ammeter? In the order of one ampere? Isn't it? So it is available in the yes, sir. In your meter room. Okay. And uh, you just think about this voltmeter range. What is the range of the voltmeter you need for this test? Anybody? Uh, How much voltage uh, maximum really voltage is provide? Yes. If it is if it is so first you think twenty volt if he if it is hundred ten volt then what will be the voltage and if it is eleven thousand volt then what uh, would be the voltage? Uh, yes. Sir, can you please repeat what you are discussing because I joined just now. No, uh, somebody asked me a question that why we select the high voltage side for performing the short circuit test. We could also do the short circuit test at the high low voltage side, oh. but we don't do that generally. Generally the short circuit test is performed at the high voltage side, why? Somebody asked that question. That is very important question. <clears throat> now, uh, suppose mm -hmm. if you select the low voltage side, if that is the uh, 110 volt site at which you are performing the test, then what, what, how much voltage, maximum voltage you have to provide? That I already discussed that that is only two to three, two to six percent of the rated voltage. So rated voltage is 110. So that means the six percent is how much? Six percent of 110 around six volt only. 6.6. .6. Okay, sir, so around six volt only. So so that means maximum six volt you have to provide. Now you, ha you have to use this voltmeter 
again if we use that voltmeter also so you you uh, you will use only a 10% range of that voltmeter so that means you will lose the lose the uh, you can say uh, so that means that uh, what is that called you will lose the sensitivity because uh, if we uh, when you will learn the meter so generally uh, these are the all ac meters okay so all are ac meter because ac meters and dc meters are different so for transformer we have to select all ac meters not dc meters okay so ac meters uh, generally they have cramped uh, scale at the beginning then they have a linear scale first they have a cramped scale so that means 0 to 6 volt you will have only the, this much range of that total range and you will uh, lose uh, the, that means you will uh, there will be a lots of error taking the reading but if we uh, select 11000 volt so what is the 6% volt of that that is 600 volt isn't it so you have that volt voltmeter is available so you can use the total range 0 to 600 volts okay now third one is the watt meter now for this watt meter if we select uh, the low voltage side then you see the voltage is 6 volt and the current is 100 ampere so is is a mismatch between the current coil and pressure coil reading so this type of watt meters are generally not available okay so there should be some match between the current coil and pressure coil reading or oh, sorry range okay so therefore we generally prefer the short circuit test for doing uh, sorry uh, the high voltage side for doing the short circuit test okay so have you understood this point yes sir okay anything else sir uh, then sir i mean ekhane to amra mane mane step up transformer use korlam jodi step down use korlam tale no no it's not step up transformer mane no no transformer whether the transformer is step up or step down whether the transformer will be step up or step down that depends on your application when the transformer will be in use then you can say it's a step up or step down transformer when the transformer is kept idle okay then you can't say that it is a step up or step down transformer it's just a transformer okay so when the transformer comes to our laboratory we don't know that at what purpose it will be used whether it will it will it will be used for step up or step down we don't know we only know that this transformer has some low voltage coil some high voltage coil markings are there okay so voltage ratings are there kva ratings are there and we are asked to do the test and issue the certificates so that's all okay now uh, what we have to do okay, sir. you have to first uh, uh, perform the open circuit test at the low voltage side then you have to perform the high voltage side that uh, short circuit is the high voltage side then whenever uh, that when you will draw the equivalent circuit then you have to transform the parameters in one side only either you have to transform all the parameters in low voltage side or you have to transform all the parameters in high voltage side if you want to transform the parameters in the low voltage side then the open circuit test parameter should not be disturbed only the short circuit test parameters you have to transform is that clear okay yes sir then any more question sir yes sir in the open circuit test we are uh, applying uh, voltage uh, racket voltage source at the low voltage side hmm. 
sir then uh, the volt uh, the range of the voltmeter should be in the range of the uh, low voltage rated voltage yes sir then uh, then uh, the rating of the transformer if it is uh, 10 kva uh, okay. then then sir the uh, current in the circuit will be large yes but that is not my condition for open circuit then, for open circuit test the condition is not the rated current Okay, so remember that the condition for uh, open circuit test is rated voltage. So that is uh, that is why I am keeping op the circuit open so that very low current will very less current will flow. Only the no load current will flow, and the no load current is only a few percent of the full load current. What is that percent? Two to six percent of the full load current. Suppose if your if your full load current is thousand amp. Okay, so if that is the full load current or rated current, rated current and full load current is similar. Okay, so if that is the rated current or full load current, your no load current that are supposed that is supposed to flow in the open circuit condition only two to six percent. If we take six percent also, so how much it will be? It will be only sixty amps, isn't it? Yes, sir. So that means the no load current is sufficiently low compared to the full load current. Okay. So therefore, actually, what we are, why we are uh, doing this open circuit and short circuit? Because when we are uh, doing the open circuit test, we are eliminating few parameters because it is not possible to determine all the six parameters from a single test. Okay, so because suppose we have six unknown. Okay, six unknown. So how much equation, how many equations are required? Six equation. Isn't it? So how many unknowns we have? Suppose parameter wise, six unknown, isn't it? So that means six equations are required. How we are managing the six equations? Okay, so when we are doing this open circuit test, we are having how many equations? Only one equation. But that one equation is a complex equation. Now complex equations means two real equation. So from that we are determining two parameters. Okay. Now, when we are performing the short circuit test, okay, so when we are performing the short circuit test, again, we are, we are getting one equation. Again, that is two real equation. We are getting okay, and by our previous knowledge, we are making this half. So this is how we are getting six parameters. Are you getting? Yes, sir. So it is not possible. If we want to uh, measure or determine all these six parameters from a single test, it is not possible because for from a single test, you will have only two real equation or one complex equation. So anyway, any uh, any other question? Okay. Now, uh, as I was telling you that we should discuss something about the uh, losses and efficiency. Whiteboard is not working properly today. I don't know why. <clears throat> so already we have mentioned a few losses. What are the losses? Can you? 
remember what are the major losses sir core loss copper loss and in the part of the core loss we have eddy eddy current loss and uh, hysteresis hysteresis loss. loss okay so copper loss and core loss okay so copper loss is very simple that is uh, i square r okay now core loss that is also well known that is ed current loss plus hysteresis loss now what is ed current loss ed current loss we all know that whenever there is a time varying flux passing through a passing through a core okay then uh, emf is induced in form of ed so these are called the ed emf ed emf now uh, fortunately and unfortunately that core which is uh, the iron generally we use as a core is also a good electric uh, material conducting material so that means it has uh, both the magnetic property and conducting property isn't it so therefore whenever there is an edmf produced it will carry the eddy current so the eddy current starts flowing in the small loops okay and whenever there is eddy current in that uh, iron core so there is a loss associated that is called the eddy current loss okay and if the frequency of the current or frequency of the flux increases the current tends to flow from the outer side it is called the skin effect anyway i am not going into the details of those now this is how the ed current loss is uh, produced and what is the hysteresis loss hysteresis loss is basically due to the magnetic reversal okay so you all know that Uh, which is called the VH curve, isn't it? Okay, so as it is a magnetic material, so it will have a VH curve with saturation. Okay, now whenever you are giving some current, okay, so it produces the MMF. So that is basically H proportional to H. So H proportional to MMF. and mmf is n into i and b is proportional to i don't know why this is happening b is proportional to the flux okay so also we call it phi i curve so whenever we have the current like this so if the current is like this time varying current so we get the total vh loop in one cycle of the current okay so therefore in one cycle of the current we uh, lost this amount of power so the area of the vh curve is basically the hysteresis loss in one cycle okay so in one cycle the area of the vh curve represents the hysteresis loss so this is how we have the hysteresis loss so that is the genesis of hysteresis loss and eddy current loss and uh, this hysteresis loss and eddy current loss is uh, generally depends on the voltage input voltage if the voltage is less then these two losses will be less they also depends on the frequency but not uh, a, a similar way so eddy current is proportional to the square of the frequency and the hysteresis loss is proportional to the uh, some uh, f to the power x where the x is the stage means constant so i am not going into that details but anyway the the eddy current both the eddy current loss and hysteresis loss are also proportional to the frequency 
so these are the two major losses in a transformer there are other losses uh, in a transformer but so generally neglect those one is the dielectric loss now what is dielectric loss the transformer has has several dielectric materials like uh, between the core and the winding there is an insulation between this uh, between the two windings that means the low voltage and wind high voltage there is another insulation okay now generally we laminate uh, the core to uh, reduce the eddy current loss that you all know so generally we laminate the core if we laminate the core then the eddy current loss can be minimized now what do you mean by lamination laminations are basically very thin sheets of iron generally we use a special type of iron that is called the crgo cold rolled grain oriented steel so special type of iron we use for uh, this lamination transformer lamination and that is cold rolled grain oriented okay so this type of steel we use as a lamination so laminations are very thin uh, sheet of cr geometrial uh, in the order of uh, you can say 0.3 to 4 mm 0.3 to 4 mm so less than 1 mm so that thin and both side of that uh, steel is varnish laminated varnish is a kind of insulation or dielectric material so there are also we have some dielectric so i am just giving you giving you the examples of dielectric which you use inside the transformer okay now uh, most of the time transformers uh, the core and the total uh, transformer is uh, kept inside a tank that is called a transformer tank that you can see uh, the road side now this transformer tanks are generally filled with a special type of oil it's called transformer oil it's a special type of synthetic oil which is used inside the transformer now this oil serves two purposes one for cooling two for giving an insulation so that that means the transformer oil is another insulation which is used inside a transformer so there are uh, several dielectric materials used inside a transformer okay sir. yes sir sir at uh, sir for once more can you just repeat all the materials so that i can just see whether i have noted the which one sir, all the the dielectric materials that you just said can you just please repeat it once more just the material name it's a name soon no dielectric material i have not uh, mentioned so there are so different only transformer of... oil should i to bollo ha i have i have only mentioned mention that exact material Sorry. i have not mentioned i have i am mentioning that where that insulation dielectric materials are used okay i am mentioning where the the dielectric materials are used in a transformer insulation or dielectric materials are used between core and winding between low voltage and high voltage winding inside the transformer tank on the iron lamination which is used for the core material okay so these are the different uh, dielectric materials which you use in a transformer i have not mentioned the exact material because that is out of the scope okay so these are the dielectric materials which you use inside the transformer but what is dielectric loss then now uh, we all know that suppose we have a dielectric from your static electricity knowledge you can say suppose you have a dielectric inside this okay and you have applied some voltage what will happen can anybody tell me what will happen so uh, voltage 
Mr. Partial I will be using. Yes. Okay. So let me tell you that uh, the dielectric materials consist of several electric dipoles. So these dipoles will be aligned. Okay. So dipoles will be aligned like this. There will be alignment of dipoles. Isn't it? Do you, do you know this? Now, if we change this polarity plus to minus, what will happen? The dipoles will be aligned in reverse direction. Is it it? Are you getting or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, think of the this reversal of polarity yeah, very fast that means uh, in uh, 20 milliseconds it will change it will change once in 20 milliseconds in one millisecond maybe 50 times in one second it may be 50 times change a 50 time reversal what will happen okay so due to the intermolecular friction there will be some loss and that is called the dielectric loss. Okay, so that the dipoles will be aligned in proper in a certain direction, then for a different polarity, it will change its direction. Okay, so in this process, there will be a intermolecular friction, and due to that, we'll get a loss, and that loss is referred as dielectric loss. Now this dielectric laws. Sir, is this how micro? Sir. Hmm. Sir, is this how microwaves heat? Yes, correct. Actually, here we are uh, discussing about the dielectric loss. Now, when we are uh, we, when we are mentioning the term loss, we always our intention will be to minimize that. But not that that this dialect this principle we cannot use for uh, uh, for uh, giving a positive result. Okay, so this same principle we can use for dielectric heating. Okay, like eddy current loss. Here here we are trying to reduce the eddy current loss. But the same eddy current loss principle we can use for induction oven induction cooker okay so there we want to maximize that there we'll use all the non laminated iron for induction oven and induction cooker to maximize the loss because there the loss is not loss there is the loss is manifested as heat okay so here also our dielectric loss is a loss, we will try to minimize it. But for uh, this microwave or our different applications are there, there we will try to maximize that loss to get more heat. So anyway, so that is the same principle as we have pointed out. Uh, okay, so but here you see here in the order in the uh, this frequency range, because uh, to get a sufficient amount of dielectric loss, we should have very high frequency. Like uh, in a microwave, you know that is very high frequency. Inside you have a transformer and it gives very high frequency. The high frequency transformers are there. So we need very high frequency to get a good amount of dielectric loss. So at 50 Hertz frequency, that means that the frequency at which our normal transformer works at that frequency range this dielectric loss is very minimum compared to other two major losses like copper loss and core loss so therefore we neglect the dielectric loss okay so there is another loss which is called the stray load loss so i am discussing all these four losses because for all the electrical machines you will have these losses so another is stray load loss. So what is stray load loss? Now, sometimes the current 
which you uh, provide uh, in a transformer may not be sinusoidal. Now, if the thing is not sinusoidal, then uh, I think you don't know this thing because we haven't come across the transforms like Fourier transforms and all. So if uh, the thing is not sinusoidal, then we can represent that non-sinusoidal uh, wave uh, as a summation of infinite number of weighted sinusoids. Okay, so that means thereby we get the harmonics. For all these harmonics, uh, and, uh, can I repeat please again? Yes. Can you please repeat again? Just what you have said. I told that if the waves, that is the currents, waves, flux waves, are not exactly sinusoidal, then uh, how do you analyze all this? Because all the formulation that you have based on the sinusoidal assumption. Now, if the things are not sinusoidal, then what you will do? The solution for that is Fourier series. Now Fourier is saying that any non-sinusoidal periodic quantity, periodic waveform can be represented as a sum of infinite number of weighted sinusoids. Okay. And these uh, sinusoids will have different frequencies. The minimum frequency of those sinusoids will have the frequency of the original waveform. And that is called the fundamental. And all the other sinusoids are called the harmonics, which have integer multiple frequency of the fundamental. So you will not understand all this because you have not studied the Fourier series yet. Isn't it? Have you studied Fourier series? In mathematics or anywhere? Yes, sir. I've, I've just no, sir. seen the formula. No, sir. Not studied actually. Okay, so you have not studied it. Anyway, but you should know that uh, if the things are not sinusoidal, so that is that is the most of the case because no practical waveforms are sinusoidal. Okay, so it consists of harmonics, and nowadays the percentage of harmonics are getting more and more. Okay, so as we are using all the nonlinear thing, like electronics thing, so all the electronics things are basically the nonlinear thing. And nonlinear non thing produce a non sinusoidal waveform. Okay, and non sinusoidal waveforms is basically is a fundamental, that means the one sinusoid plus other sinusoids, which are having different frequencies. Okay, now for, uh, I think you have studied phasers. As I have already mentioned, phasers is a diagram rather. Yes, sir. In this class. So you have studied phasers. Now you should know the assumptions for. Yes, phasers. sir. Can you tell me what is the assumption? What are the assumptions for phasor diagram or phasor algebra? Can anybody tell me? That what is the basic assumption behind this phasor algebra and phasor diagram? Sir, sir, the quantities differ in phase but are uh, same, have the same frequency. The frequency remains constant of the vectors. Frequency remains constant. That is uh, one assumption. Frequency must be constant for all the quantities. Are, what are the other so phasors are time varying quantities? No, phasors should be the it should represent the sinusoidal quantity only, not any time varying quantity. Yes, sir. Uh, sinusoidal. Uh, and then only you can write it like e to the power minus j something. Sir. E to the power minus j something from the mathematics knowledge, you know that sinusoids can be represented by e to the power j and it minus e to the power minus j. So therefore, the phasor represents the sinusoidal quantity only. 
Okay, so non sinusoidal quantity cannot be represented in phasors. So that is the basic assumption. So if the things are not sinusoidal, so we don't, we cannot say this is the reactance because reactance. In the last class I explained that the reactance comes from the assumption of the thing is sinusoidal. Okay, so therefore we uh, we can write this sigma plus j omega and we can make this uh, sigma zero and we, we can take only one omega and omega is the angular frequency of the sinusoid wave. Okay, now if the thing is not sinusoidal, that means it is it can be represented in terms of many sinusoidals which have different frequencies now suppose the thing is like this which is not sinusoidal but periodic in nature so this can be represented by one sinusoid like this plus another sinusoid which is having an integer multiple of frequency that means Suppose the initial original waveform, original waveform has the frequency of 50 hertz. Okay, the second frequency, second sinusoid which I have drawn is having the frequency of 150 hertz. You can, you can calculate that because it is three times frequency. Okay, so like that you will have next frequency, you will have either 200 hertz or 250 hertz. You will not get all the frequency, you will get only discrete frequencies, but you will get all higher frequencies. Okay, so this 50 hertz, that means the one sinusoid will get the 50 hertz, and that is called the fundamental. And all these are called the harmonics. Now, whenever you have the harmonics, it will create additional losses inside a transformer or in any machine. And that is considered as a stray load loss. Okay. So that is considered, that is not, uh, comes under the normal uh, core loss. That is considered under stray load loss because in that you can have both iron loss or core loss and copper loss. So together they are called the stray load loss because they are the extra losses. So these are the losses and generally we neglect these two and we take only the copper loss and cold loss for calculating the efficiency. Okay. Any question? Okay. Now the efficiency What is the efficiency? How the efficiency is defined? You all know that this is output. Output by input. By input. Output. Uh, the quantity we have to measure. Uh, you have to mention which is which output? Output power, output voltage, output current, output energy. What is that? So here we generally define the efficiency as output power by input power. Okay, now the output power, if we take the secondary side, if we refer the total thing in the secondary side, so it will be V2 I2 cos theta T because that is the power consumed by the load. And here we are taking only the active power. Okay, and what is the input power? Input power, we can say the output power plus some losses. So that is the same output power I have to write once again. Plus two losses. What are the two losses? Copper loss and code loss. Okay. So output by output plus losses. Now, between these two losses, copper loss and coal loss, which one is current dependent or load dependent? 
I've already mentioned that load is nothing but current, isn't it? So load means current only. So between these two losses, cold loss and copper loss, which is current dependent? Sir, copper loss. Copper loss. So copper loss is current dependent. So copper loss is I2 square R E2. Refer to the secondary side. So we should write R2 EQ. Total equivalent resistance referred to the secondary side. And PC is not current dependent. It is a voltage dependent one. And generally voltage doesn't vary for a transformer. Okay, the thing, the variable which varies widely, that is the current, that is the load. Okay, so therefore we call this PC as a fixed loss. Okay. Now the main variable here is the current or load. Now load has two part. One is I2, another is theta 2. So I2 is the amplitude of the load current and theta 2 is the power factor angle of the load. Now if we want to derive the maximum efficiency condition, with respect to the load current only, what should I do? We have to take the derivative d eta. Derivative with respect to I2. I2 only. So d eta d I2 and we have to make it zero. So you just try to find out the condition for this maximum eta, maximum efficiency. You all try to find out the conditions for maximum efficiency. You have to take the derivative with respect to I2 only. Are you calculating? Yes, sir. Tell me the condition. What is that condition? So PC equals to I2 square into R equivalent. Yes, sir. Means I, I2 will be PC by under root 2. Yes, sir. It is PC. Uh, I mean this. Square, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So that means. You have. 
কালকে পাবে কালকে so you have two losses major losses you have considered here one is the cold loss and another is the copper loss now when this copper loss because the copper loss is a variable loss and cold loss is a fixed loss when the variable loss or the copper loss becomes equals to the cold loss or iron loss we will get the maximum efficiency that is called that is called the maximum efficiency condition okay and uh, sometimes we also represent like this i2 equals to root over of pc by r2 eq for maximum okay so for i2 eta max to get the maximum eta we can use this expression now this expression also we can write that uh, if we multiply it with v2 so you will get the va and if we divide it by 1000 we will get the kva here also we have to do the same thing we have to multiply it with v2 and we have to divide it by 1000 okay and what is we can do we can multiply by some full load current square here we will get or uh, divided by full load current square here we will multiply by full load current so then it will be as it is so that means the left hand side we can write that kva required for maximum eta equals to kva which is given in the name plate that is called the full load kva into root over of pc by full load current square by into r2 eq here i have taken that i2 sorry v2 ifl by 1000 that is the kva full load so this value is generally given in the name plate Sir. Yes. Sir, uh, full load current current means that uh, I naught plus I C plus I one. Yes. But that full load current and, that uh, and you can calc calculate from the KVA and voltage rating given in the name plate. But that is not required because the K I am now oh, representing okay. in terms of KVA. Why I am switching the over to this uh, formulation because the current is not given in the name plate. Whatever what is given in the name plate that is KVA or VA apparent power. Apparent power ratings are given on the name plate. Now we should know. Suppose the KVA given on the name plate is hundred KVA. Now we have to say that at what kva we have to operate the transformer to get the maximum efficiency out of it okay now here that here we will have the 100 kva you should know this fraction what is that fraction that i want to find out and how to find out that fraction now this is copper law coal loss and in the denominator, you see that is the full load copper loss because you have used full load current to determine that copper loss. So this is full load CUFL, so full load copper loss. Now this core loss is directly obtained from open circuit test. And this full load copper loss directly can be obtained from short circuit test. Now, if we have the data, of the open circuit test and short circuit test, we can find out this fraction and we can say that at what KVA I have to operate the transformer to get the maximum efficiency. Is that point clear? Yes, sir. Okay, so that means we need only two data open circuit 
uh, watt meter data and short circuit watt meter data. Because what open circuit watt meter data directly gives you the PC and the short circuit what because short circuit, you know the short circuit test is done at full load current. That is the condition for short circuit test. And the the resistance you get from the short circuit test is R2 EQ. ंड so we'll discuss the transformer up to this only then uh, we'll start the rotating machines so have you understood the losses and efficiency part of a transformer yes sir yes sir okay now uh, i have a problem sheet anyway i have not uh, send you that problem sheet Uh, I'm trying to send you. So you just try to work out the numerical problems mentioned there. One problem I can discuss here uh, because I have few more time. Some time I have uh, at least ten, fifteen minutes. I can take. Okay. Now one thing you just tell me that uh, tra is transformer a machine? According to the definition of electrical machine, this transformer is an electrical machine. No. Why? Sir, uh, sir, in machine, sir, you know, so, I mean, mechanical energy to electrical energy to convert, hai. So, you know, the transformer, you know, that amount, which is, hai, na. Sir, transformer, you know, moving part, me. Conversion, dekha jan. Hmm. You are correct. So that means there is no conversion, mechanical to electrical or electrical to mechanical energy. So therefore, the transformer is in, should not be called an electrical machine. But we study transformers under electrical machine subject because it is very important electromagnetic device, which is very much used in electrical power system for more than. Uh, hundred years, okay. So therefore, it's very important electromagnetic device. So let us you just write down the numerical problems. Have you studied current source, voltage source, etc.? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. In the other part of electrical, na no? basic electrical. Yes, sir.
Okay, so this is the problem. And let me draw the circuit. So this is the symbol of a current source. I think you know this. And this is exciting. The primary of a transformer. Can you tell me what are these two lines? Sometimes for a transformer, we use these two lines. Actually, these two lines are representing the magnetic core. If we have no core or it is called the iron, uh, it is called the air core, then we should not have these two lines. So these two lines represents the magnetic core like iron. the waveform <coughs> the maximum value is 10 amps and this is 5 this is 10 this is 15 this is 20 Okay, so you have to find the peak voltage. Voltage across A and B with S open. So this is the first part, and the second part you have to find out. So the second part you just write down. I don't know whether so if the waveform of IP you can write down it because it has hanged. So you just write down if the waveform of IP if the waveform of IP is changed to IP equals to 10 sine 100 pi t this much amps find out the same that means the peak voltage across A and B with S closed. S is the switch. So this is the question. Would you try or I mentioned here there is called here only? What do you want? Very interesting problem. It needs your basic knowledge only because we have an approximated one because leakage flux is zero. And you have seen everywhere we use the voltage source in the primary side, but here the current source has been used to excite the primary. Not only that, number of turns is not given, only the turns ratio is given one is to one. Magnetizing inductance is given, that is 400 by pi midi Henry. So how do you solve? The first part is little easy, but not the second one. 
Okay, so what I will do, I will give you this as homework. Okay, so you just send me this solution by email. Whoever send this email first, you will get a prize. Okay. So I think you know my email ID. If we don't, you can write down it. So this is my email ID. You just try to solve it. And send me by uh, scanning it to this email ID. Okay. Do you need any clue? No, sir. Arbeto? let me take the attendance by the recording just a minute when the situation will be normal you just come to my room i will give you that Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much. I'm stopping the share. Stopping.